Hey, welcome to this week's English lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to help you learn how to think and finally speak English. Think in English and speak English in order to sound like a native English speaker. This lesson is going to change your life. Are you ready? Well then, I am teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. The very first thing we're going to look at is this question right here. What are your vacation plans? Now to be very honest, when someone asks you this question, you probably want to immediately just say where you're going. But in order to speak English, like a native English speaker, you must remember the five W's who, what, when, where, and why. So let's organize our thoughts to think in English, who my friends and I, what are planning to go on vacation when next month, where to a tropical Island, why to relax soak up the sun and enjoy water activities. Now, one thing you'll notice we're still on step one, the thinking portion using the five W's. One thing you'll notice is that it's very simple to think of answers to the five W's who, Oh, my friends and I, what we're going on vacation when ah, uh, next month. You see how it's easy to organize your thoughts to get the information. Now we need to turn this information into a response that native English speakers would give. So we've thought about it. We've organized our thoughts based on the five W's who, what, when, where, and why, what would our response look like based on the five W's here we go. I'm going to read it for you. Follow along next month. My friends and I are planning to go on vacation. We are planning to go to a tropical Island. It has been a long year, so we can't wait to relax, soak up the sun and indulge in thrilling water activities. Listen, I am telling you, my friend, if you were to answer this question like this, the individual listening to you would be thoroughly impressed. Why? Because this is a response that a native English speaker would give. What makes it that type of response right here? Once again, using the five W's who, what, when, where, and why you've given an answer to who you're going with, what you're going to do, where you're going to go, when, and why all of this information is included in your response. So we have the information. It makes sense. It's very clear. You caught it, which means you're also going to be able to deliver the same response. What are your vacation plans? But notice there are two words bolded. If you're watching this lesson, I want to teach you these vocabulary words. The first one is indulge. Good again, after me indulge. Excellent. What does this mean? I said, indulge in thrilling water activities. Indulge just means to allow oneself to enjoy or have something pleasurable, especially in excess or without restraint. Hey, no restrictions. Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy everything. Have some pleasure. For example, let's say you're on a diet. And your diet says no sweets and no fried foods, but on the weekend uh, on Sunday, you're allowed to indulge in one dessert. Oh my goodness. Give me the Sunday. Give me the Sunday scoops of ice cream. I eat vegan ice cream, but Hey, whatever ice cream you get, put that ice cream on there, drizzle that hot fudge syrup on there. I'm going to indulge in this dessert. I have no restrictions on Sunday. One dessert, whatever my heart desires, I can indulge. You got it. Excellent. All right. So again, we say indulge. Now the next word is thrilling. Good again, thrilling. Excellent. Make sure your tongue comes between your teeth. Last time thrilling. Great job. Now this word thrilling, it literally just means causing excitement or exhilaration, 
producing a sudden or intense sensation of excitement. I want you to imagine you're sitting right next to me, you right here, you're sitting right next to me and we're on a roller coaster and the roller coaster is slowly going up. We're going up, we're going up, and then all of a sudden we turn, we turn, and we're about to go, ah! go all the way down. Thrilling. Were you on the ride with me? <laughs> Again, think about being on a roller coaster, and the moment it goes down that hill, right, or hits a sharp curve, thrilling, exhilaration, excitement. You got it? Excellent. So again, that last part says, and indulge in thrilling, exciting, exhilarating water activities. You got it? Excellent. So again, for the question, what are your vacation plans? All we did, step one, using the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why, organized our thoughts, and then we were able to give this response like a native English speaker. But is it possible to do it again? So I want us to look at this example right here. Again, we're still going to be using the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. Don't forget that. These W's are the foundation. The same question. What are your vacation plans? So who start with who? Well, our family, what decided to go on vacation when this coming summer, where to a picturesque mountain resort. Why to escape the heat, go hiking and reconnect with nature. Now, remember all we are doing right now is answering the five W's who, what, when, where, and why we're giving the information. We're preparing the details. We're thinking about it, right? In order to answer the question, what are your vacation plans? Now it's time for us to take this information, the five W's and turn it into a response that a native English speaker would give. Here we go. Let's read it together. Our family has decided to go on vacation this coming summer. We plan to go to a picturesque mountain resort. We are all looking forward to escaping the heat, going hiking and reconnecting with nature. I'm telling you every time I do a lesson like this, think and speak English using the five W's. I'm always amazed at how simple it is. If you simply use the five W's, I guarantee you, my friend, your English is going to be transformed. This right here is a response that a native English speaker would give. And the only reason is because it includes the five W's who, what, when, where, and why, which means you can do it. Now in this response, you'll see that there are three words I want to teach you. The first one is picturesque. Good. Excellent. Uh, one more time after me picturesque. Great job. Now this just means visually attractive, especially in a quaint or charming way, right? I want you to think about a mountain and there's a house on the top of the mountain. You see the trees, the wind is blowing through the trees. You see the sun kind of peeking through the peaks of the mountain picturesque looks like a picture again, visually attractive in English. We say picturesque. You got it. Excellent. All right. The second word is resort. Good again, resort. Great job. Now this just refers to a place where people go for relaxation, leisure, relaxing or recreation typically featuring accommodations, entertainment, and various amenities. You go there. It's kind of like everything is included. I went to a resort actually in 2023 with my family, my best friend, and two of my other very close friends. And we really enjoyed the resort. There was food on the resort. There were activities on the resort, all included on the property resort. You got it. Excellent. All right. And finally reconnect. Good. Last time after me reconnect. Excellent. Now this just means to establish a connection or reestablish a bond, especially after a period of separation or distance, right? First you're connected. 
And then over time, either you get busy or you're not in each other's space too much. So you're not able to connect and then you reconnect. So people can reconnect, but look at the example. I said, reconnecting with nature. Think about it. We live busy lives. So maybe you're inside of your office, eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Then you go home cooking, cleaning, taking care of your kids. And you don't have the opportunity to just be ah, out in nature, breathing the fresh air, looking at God's creation, the trees, the birds and the animals. You don't have an opportunity to reconnect with nature. You got it. Excellent. All right. So again, you see how the question we answered the question. What was the question again? What are your vacation plans? And all we did step one, five W's think in English, who, what, when, where, why, but let me prove again, the same question. We can do it again. So once again, the question, what are your vacation plans? Step one is just think in English. We're only going to be using who, what, when, where, and why same question. What are your vacation plans? Who Mike and I, what planning our next vacation when in the fall, where to a secluded cabin in the woods. Why to disconnect from technology, enjoy peaceful surroundings and go hiking. Same question, different response, but we use the same method. Five W's who, what, when, where, and why. So once again, we have our five W's answering the question. Now we're going to turn this into a response that a native English speaker would give. Here's the response. Mike and I are in the middle of planning our next vacation. After much deliberation, we decided to go in the fall. We have chosen to retreat to a secluded cabin in the woods. The main reason we are going so far is that we want to disconnect from technology. We also want to enjoy the peaceful surroundings and go hiking. Excellent. Excellent response to this question. What are your vacation plans? Now within this response, you'll see that I have four words that I want to explain and give you the definition of here's the very first one. I want to make sure you understand deliberation. Good again after me deliberation. Excellent. Now this just means the act of carefully considering or discussing something before making a decision or taking action. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss this before we make a move. Let's pause and let's make sure we're on the same page. Deliberation. Yes. Good job. The next one retreat to again, retreat to. Excellent. Now this just means to withdraw or move back to a quiet secluded place. Don't worry. I'll explain secluded for relaxation, reflection, or escape from daily life. Listen, life is just busy work. Family's a lot going on. I need to step back, take a step back and go to a quiet place. I need to retreat to dot, dot, dot. You got it. Excellent. All right. And next secluded as promised after me secluded. Good job. Last time after me secluded. Excellent. Now this just means hidden or isolated from others kept apart from the hustle and bustle of society. So think about a cabin in the woods, right? You might live in the city or the suburbs, right? Cars driving by all the time, somebody screaming alarms going off. But when you go to the middle of the woods, it's quiet. It's very peaceful. Secluded area again, hidden or isolated. You got it. Excellent. All right. And finally disconnect. Good. Last time after me disconnect. Excellent. Now this just means to break or interrupt the connection of something, especially an electronic device from a power source or network, or to separate or detach oneself from something or someone often temporarily in order to have a break or time away. Hey, listen, 
I'm on my computer all the time. I'm on my phone all the time, my iPad. I just need to disconnect and take time to relax in a secluded area. You got it? Excellent. All right. So again, you're seeing same question. We were able to answer it three different ways using the five W's think and speak, think and speak. I hope this lesson helped you a lot. I hope you continue using this method to move forward. Don't forget if you want to get my newsletter every week, three times free newsletter, click the link in the description. I'll talk to you next time. But as always remember to speak English. You still there? Ha <laughs> ha! You know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. I want to do this again. I said it's story time. Hey, hey, hey. I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. Story time. Today, I was thinking about my mom. And I told this story a long time ago. So depending on how long you've been with me on this channel, you may or may not know this story. So as you know, I'm your English teacher. I love helping you achieve your English goals. And I love making sure I give you a plan or a strategy. And I usually write my goals down. And I was thinking about my parents, my family, and how we are very determined, right? My mom, my sister, dad, were very determined, right? And my elder sister as well. So my mom, I remember when I was growing up, I remember this happened when I was about 11, either 10 or 11 years old. Now I've always been an early bird, wake up early, go to bed early. I'm not staying up late, right? And it was about midnight, a little close to midnight. And my mom at that time worked late. She worked nights and she was also in school. She had to have been third. If I was 11, wow. She was in her thirties, right? My mom was in her thirties and she had always had this dream of going back to school and she wanted to become a respiratory therapist, right? Dealing with the respiratory system at the hospital. And so she went to school, right? So she had to work and go to school. My dad worked in Maryland. It's hard not to work husband and that wife to work because it's expensive in Maryland. So my mom and my dad both worked. My mom would work nights and then study. Right. And I think this happened to be a day where she worked all day and then came home at night, late at night. Anyway. So I got up in the middle of the night because the lights were on downstairs. My dad was asleep. My sister was asleep. And I quietly walked down the steps again. It was around midnight and I peeked over the banister, the stairs, and I saw my mom head down studying. She was focused. She didn't even see me. And I stood there and I looked at her and it's so interesting because 30 years later, that image of my mom working hard to achieve a goal, staying up at night because she had a goal and she wanted to achieve it, giving her all and not giving up has stuck with me my entire life. Whenever I've had an exam, Whenever I've had a challenge at work, anything that has happened that has required extra effort, that image will pop in my head. My mom didn't give up. She pushed herself. She moved forward because she had a goal and that image will forever be in my mind. The rest of my life, my mom was focused on achieving a goal. Why am I telling you the story? You have a goal. You want to speak English fluently. This year we're on the same page. The goal is this year to get you to that goal in order to achieve any goal. We're talking about English, but any goal you have to be focused, you have to be determined and you have to be consistent. It's not going to be easy. My family, we're all early birds midnight. No, whoa. It's difficult for us to stay up, but my mom was up at midnight focusing on achieving her goal, working hard. And it was not easy. She failed her exam three times to get her certification. And the fourth time I think is when she got it. Even in that recognizing you might fall, pick yourself up, move forward. You might fall again, pick yourself up, move forward. I'm trying to encourage you. 
Pick yourself up. Keep going forward. You will achieve your English goal. And on top of that, someone is always watching. My mom didn't know I was watching her. 30 years later, that one view of my mom is still affecting me now. Who's watching you? Who is watching you on your English journey? Maybe it's your child. Maybe it's your niece or your nephew. Maybe it's your friend and your friend hasn't said anything. Maybe it's a coworker. Somebody is watching you. And if you achieve your goal, you'll give them the courage they need to achieve theirs. Never forget that. I believe in you. Now you have to believe in yourself. I'll talk to you next time.